Oh, we ran into a little problem here. You'll notice this nut isn't exactly centered. You'll notice that it's offset to the side, and unfortunately, with our push rider link, the one that's closer to that stud is hitting. <laughs> I got through about four of these before I noticed it was hitting. And some of them it wasn't hitting on, I guess. Some of them studs are a little bit further in than others, but there's only two options. Grind down the bottom of the the uh, the rocker arm a little bit, which really wouldn't be that much of a big deal because it's barely hitting. I mean, barely hitting. I did grind some off of that one right there and made it clear by 10,000. Or we could just get a longer push rod, which could throw off our valve train geometry, and I'll go into that a little bit later. Or we could use a rocker arm that isn't as bulky under the trunnion like these are, like a Comp Pro Mag, I'm pretty sure would clear. Or I could take the heads off and have where the the nut goes onto the head, I could have that area ground down, and that would help it clear. So this is with the 7.2 length push rod that we were originally using, and here's just a video of where it's hitting. And this is the clearance that it has if I was to use a 7.3 push rod. And this is what it looked like with the 7.2 and the 7.3 push rod on the valve stem when I, um, and this is just using the stock spring. From what I gather, you're supposed to paint these, set the preload, turn the motor over, and you're supposed to use a weaker spring, but these were with the springs that are actually on the car. You'll notice the 7.2, it's a little bit short, and it's a thicker sweep. And the 7.3, it shows a little bit long, but it's a thinner sweep. Now, when I went online, looking up how to set the valve train geometry, there was a lot of different sites and videos, and a lot of them said the most important thing was for the roller to be middle of the valve stem and have the smallest sweep centered and the smallest sweep. You know, you put the rocker arm on, you set the, like you're supposed to, the pre, set the preload with the lifter down, and then turn the motor over, and you paint the back of the valve stem, and it makes this mark as you as the rocker goes up and down. And um, I showed you the 7.2 and the 7.3 sweep, but now some websites say to draw a line through the middle of the trunnion there, to the middle of the of the ball that goes up and down on the valve stem there, and at mid-lift, you should that line should be 90 degrees with the valve stem. Now, if, if we do that though, <laughs> it, um, the, the rollers on the very back of the valve stem. So there's a lot of conflicting info. So <clears throat> I don't know if we should do the sweep in the middle or do the 93, 90 degree thing. Also, another thing, if you do that 90 degree thing, it, it um, there's not much, it, it lifts the rocker up so high because you need a, on, on this particular setup, you'd have to have a push rod so long there wouldn't be enough threads left that I'd be comfortable with the poly lock on there and you could combat that with a shorter valve stem but then you get into you messing with your spring heights and your clearances between your lock and the retainer and your and your valve seal blah 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 and this video it just shows if we were to achieve the 90 with a longer push rod um, it shows how much threads would be left on the uh, the rocker stud which I mean, you could get a longer rocker stud. You definitely need tall valve covers, which we do have. But I think the best thing would is the is pick a, a rod a push rod length that's going to have a good tight sweep in the middle of the valve stem, because if you do that 90 degree thing on this motor, these Pro Max heads and these Scorpion rocker arms, it it has the um, the rear roller tip on the stem way too far back on the valve stem that I would be comfortable with. So I think more than likely I'm going to go out there and put a 7.3 on it, push rod, or you know, I got the push rod length checker. I'll put it at 7.3 and I'll turn them. I'll paint the valve stem, set the rocker, turn the motor over, and I'm going to see how much clearance I got and see what kind of wear pattern it makes. 
and uh, if it all looks good like it did before when I did this and the, that other picture I posted, then I'm just going to roll with the 7.3 uh, push rods for 100 bucks. Now I didn't mention this in the video, but on this rocker arm, I did grind it down. And this is with the 7.2 push rods we had been using. And there is a 10 thousandths of clearance. Let me take that off and show you how much I grinded it down. So that's all it took to get it to clear, but you can see right here, it was still hitting right there too. So it wasn't completely clearing. And I just used a flat file to grind that down. It's aluminum, it grinds down easy. So we have both our 7.2 push rods, trick flow 7.2, 80 wall thickness. Now what I'm going to do is I got my push rod length checker here. We're going to set this one at 7.3. And we're going to put that on the side that would normally hit. It's not both rockers on that cylinder it hit. It's just one. The one where the nuts offset to on that side. But yeah, I'm going to put this on 7.3. I'm going to put it on the rocker on number one that would be hitting. And then I'm going to put the 7.2 back on the one that wouldn't be hitting. And then I'm going to uh, mark the valve stem. Um, set the rockers, turn the motor over a few times where the valves go up and down and see what kind of marks we got. All right, I got my lifters all the way down. I got my adjustable one on this side. 7.2's on that side. I used a Sharpie and painted in the valve stems. Now I'm going to put this rocker on and see how much it, because this is the one that would hit the nut, because this is the one that would hit the nut, and that's the one that would hit the nut, and then that's the one that would hit the nut. See, and that's why I don't want to grind all those down, because if I ground all those down and someone took these rockers off and didn't put them back on the way they came off, like if they put, like this one would need to ground down. If they took this one off, they took these two off and they swapped them. This one wouldn't be ground down on this side like this one would. And it, there'd be a problem there. So I think it'd be worth an extra hundred bucks. So that problem would never happen. But let's go ahead and put, these, put this one on and see how well it clears with a 7.3 push rod. Now I put that one on. Tighten the nut down, the lifter all the way down, tighten the nut down, no up and down movement in the push rod. And I did give it a half a turn preload, even though we only run these an eighth of a turn. But uh, I don't know if y'all can see in there or not. There's plenty of clearance with the 7.3 push rod. Because as the... Uh, as the push rod goes up, pushes the valve down, that's actually going to get bigger and bigger distance. Actually, it rocks back. It, it does rock back, so yeah. So that's why that other one I ground down was hitting in the back. It was hitting when the valve was pushed down, but that's, that's plenty of clearance there. But let's see what kind of mark we get. Oh, they're shaking off. All right, they're both set as they should be. Let's turn it over. Make the make those go up, up and down a few times. See what kind of marks we got. All right, I let the rocker arms go up and down twice on each of them. And you'll see that's what we got on the seven point three. It's brightest, right? there but it does go down to here so that's pretty much right in the middle and this is what we got on the 7.2 look how wide it is it goes from here up to there so that one's the 7.2 is too short the 7.3 is perfect for the sweep yeah, and the 7.3 clears the rockers. That's perfect, 7.3. So that's what we're gonna go with. 
we're going to go with the 7.3 that's going to clear the rockers up fine and everything I bought a little tool that you can I don't think it works very good but I bought it just because it was cheap it's a little tool that you just set on there it goes down on the rocker stud and it's supposed to hit the valve stem and the push rod at the same time if it don't if it hits the this and not hitting the push rod then the push rod needs to be longer if it's hitting the push rod and not this then the push rod needs to be shorter one of them little pro form tools i never even knew they existed and so i was doing some research on this but um i ordered it's like 15 bucks i just wanted to see how accurate it was but yeah based on that i think we need a 7.3 a 7.4 is going to put us the other direction too far that's 7.3 that's perfect that's if it's this way the push rods too short if it's this way the way my fingers pointing the push rods too long so if your marks down here on the edge you're too long if it's up here you're too short but I think the 7.3 would be perfect so I'm just going to order some 7.3s but what do you guys think um definitely no expert on any of this stuff i just like to do it as a hobby in my spare time and just you know have fun with it and you know go racing but what do you guys think like and subscribe and have a great day